Pastor Jim gave me this opportunity to tell you a little bit about me. And um, this is actually uh, one of the most difficult things I've probably ever deal with in my life. I was raised in Idaho, northern Idaho. I have uh, six generations or more of loggers in my family. Uh, I used to spend my summers in logging camps, kind of like you'd see on TV with the axe men. Um, I wouldn't come into town sometimes for a month at a time. During the school season, I would ride on the log trucks and go to school, get out of school, get back on the log truck. In these logging camps, things were, um, I guess, uh, pretty rough. Uh, everything was uh, very physical. When people had a confrontation with each other, they would fight it out. There was always somebody yelling, screaming all the time of this fight, and then everything was settled. It was fine. And that's just how I grew up. My parents divorced um, when I was 12, and um, the judge asked me at that time who I wanted to go with, and I chose my dad. My dad was everything to me. He He taught me how to hunt, how to fish. Um, he had a, a large logging company, and every winter when we couldn't log, all the equipment was brought in, and we repaired it all to get ready for the summer season. So he taught me how to weld and how to mechanic, and do hydraulic work. And every time I had a question, my dad had an answer. He was always there for me. At the age of 14, we moved to Colorado. Uh, the environmentalists had come in and it was making it very difficult with the spotted owl and the lone wolf and for uh, a uh, logging company to survive. So we moved to Colorado and used our specialized machines to make uh, ski slopes, still logging. We lived in a small community, had about 350 people in it. So you could imagine you know pretty much everybody. I uh, used to fight a lot and I got real good at it and it seemed like I spent my days when I was around anybody wanting to fight. I would look for a fight, do anything to cause a fight. I enjoyed it. Ran into what I thought was a lot of stupid people. And in my Childish wisdom, I thought that I could beat some sense into them. Which, I've now learned that doesn't work. Um, it got so bad that I... I come, uh, I beat somebody up, put them into a coma for two weeks. was actually facing murder charges if he passed away. I was going down the wrong road and nothing was going to stop me. I didn't need anybody. Didn't have any family but my dad. All my family was in northern Idaho. But uh, I had my dad and that's all I needed and I really didn't, didn't care. January 2nd, 1996. I had said goodbye to my dad to go into a town like going to Kingsport to get some parts for a vehicle. When I had returned, seven minutes before I arrived at the house where I actually lived with my dad, he had been shot. At that time, the sheriff
sheriff, who was actually what we call the town marshal, he lives kind of kitty former, kitty corner from my dad's house. He heard the shot. Him and his wife were out for an evening walk. The bullet actually flew over their heads, and he had his wife go back into the home, and he went into my father's house, and seeing that it was actually um, the woman that he had lived with for 10 years had shot him. So then I arrived on scene. They wouldn't let me in the house, wouldn't let me see my dad. I didn't have any answers. The ambulance was actually parked at my dad's house because he was an EMT. So the EMT squad shows up. And at that time, the, all the authorities had, had showed up. And what they do, is like on TV, they actually put a yellow ribbon around everything. It's now a crime scene. They wouldn't let me back in the house. Uh, they wouldn't let me get in my vehicle. Everything was just stopped. I had a light jacket on. They told me I needed to go with family. I had no family. They told me I needed to go stay with a friend. I had no friends. And I didn't have my dad. That evening, it began to snow very hard. I'm standing outside in a snowstorm looking up at a street light, telling myself, what am I going to do now? Where am I going to go? The pastor from a local church, I didn't know it even lived close by us, put his hand on my shoulder, reached out and said, I'll help you. that God would be with me. Well, you can imagine, with my anger and torment and frustration, we had a pretty heated discussion as to why he would want to help me and why this God that he believed in would want to help me. He took me to his home. The heated discussion continued. And I couldn't understand if this God was so great, why would he take my dad? He was my everything. He actually slammed a big old preaching Bible down in front of me. It was open to the book of John. He told me, you start reading right here and don't ask me another question until you're done. I actually fell asleep on that Bible. He helped me for a few weeks, invited me to the church. Now, most of the people in the church I knew, and most of them I had fought, argued with, beat up. It was not going to be good. I couldn't go in that place. I was assured that the building was made out of brick and it was solid. It wouldn't fall in on me, but I couldn't face those people. At the end of January, I walked into the church. No one said a bad word to me. The harness was out. They welcomed me, had compassion for me. And it was like nothing has ever happened. Nothing. So I stand before you today and tell you if it wasn't for that church, the members of that church, the church body, doing what God commanded them to do, to be Christ-like, to forgive me and to accept me, I wouldn't be here today. Because of the people in the church, it changed my whole life around. In fact, I didn't lose a father, I gained one. In February 27th, 1996, I gave my heart to the Lord and I was baptized. This was the Bible that they gave to me on that day. And they wrote a passage in there that they said I should never forget. And it was from Revelation 12, 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
been very, very difficult for me sometimes to go back and think about this. But here of late, it's been really heavy on my heart. When Pastor Jim started this year, talking about the church and the importance of the church and attending the church, it was very heavy on my heart, and I just wanted to share with you that by us acting the way God would have us to do, being Christians, to not judge people, and to not uh, hold people accountable for the past. It allows people like myself uh, to be accepted and to give their heart to the Lord. And I think that's uh, one of the most important things that a church body can do. And uh, it's what, what brought me here today. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have my beautiful wife. I wouldn't have these children. I have a little three-year-old that makes people smile. None of this would be happening. None of this would be here today if it wasn't for the church body. It's a huge responsibility, but it's it's what changed my life. And so I hope by sharing this testimony that, that you can understand the importance of us as a church family. Thank you.